If you're planning a trip to the vibrant region of Northern Vietnam, you're in for an adventure. But before you pack your bags, here are 15 essential tips, one big mistake, and a few highlights from our three month stay that might help you make the most of your journey. There are a few things you'll need to consider even before you go, and the first one is whether or not you need a visa to enter the country. If you're not from one of these 25 countries, you'll need to head on over to the e-visa website listed below and start the process. There are so many websites claiming to be the official website, which can be very frustrating, so I'll put the link up on the screen again to help you navigate your way through. But once you're there, you're going to create an account, if you don't already have one, then you'll need to provide an email address and create a password. Then you'll fill out the application form with accurate information. This usually includes personal details, passport information, travel dates, and your intended places of stay while you're there. You'll need to upload the required documents. So you need to prepare digital copies of your passport's bio page and a passport size photo. You'll have to pay the e-visa processing fee online using a credit or a debit card, but make sure to review your application just to double check that all the information that you've provided is correct. Once you've done that, you can finally submit your application. You'll receive a confirmation email after submission, but make sure to keep this confirmation number handy for tracking your application status. Now you just have to wait for approval. The process typically takes a few business days, so make sure you check your email regularly. Once you receive the e-visa, make sure you download it and print out a copy. Don't forget, you'll need to bring the printed copy of your e-visa with you when you travel to Vietnam. Upon entering and exiting Vietnam, you'll show them both your passport and your e-visa to the immigration officials. It's always a good idea to apply in advance for your travel dates to allow for processing time and any unforeseen delays. Number two, international driver's permit. Embarking on a journey of exploration and adventure often starts with the ability to navigate the open road on your own. And if that sounds like something that interests you, then you'll need to obtain an international driver's permit before you leave your home country. Whether you're a seasoned traveler or embarking on your very first solo journey, your international driver's permit opens doors to endless possibilities, inviting you to chart your own course and embrace the freedom of the open road. But also keep in mind, if an ideal adventure consists of navigating the roads on two wheels, you'll need to have a motorcycle designation stamped in your IDP. Number three, banks. Amidst the thrill of exploration, managing finances efficiently is crucial when you're traveling. One key aspect often overlooked is setting up an international bank account before you go on your travels. Having an international bank account not only simplifies monetary transactions, but it also serves as a strategic tool to avoid unnecessary fees that can quickly accumulate while traveling overseas. Number four, apps. Having the right apps on your smartphone can transform your travel experience from ordinary to extraordinary. From navigating unfamiliar streets to translating foreign languages, downloading appropriate apps like these can be the key to unlocking seamless exploration. Number five, outlets. Understanding the plug types and voltage specifications can prevent unnecessary hassles and ensure your devices stay charged throughout your journey. In Vietnam, electrical outlets typically accommodate plug types A, C, and D with a voltage of 220 volts and a frequency of 50 Hertz. Having the right adapters and voltage converters can make all the difference in the world when staying connected and powered up. Number six, packing. When packing for a journey to Northern Vietnam, bringing warm clothes and layers is just not a suggestion, but a strategic necessity. Despite the country's tropical climate in many regions, Northern Vietnam presents a different picture, characterized by cooler temperatures and varying weather conditions. The region experiences chilly winters with temperatures dropping considerably, especially in the mountainous areas of Sapa and Ha Giang. So in the north, layers will be your best friend. You'll thank me later. Number seven, parking. Now, it can be described as both chaotic and creative when parking in Vietnam, especially in bustling cities like Hanoi, where motorbikes outnumber cars. Finding a parking spot can be a bit challenging. Sidewalks often double as parking spaces for motorbikes, leaving little room for pedestrians. Parking fees can be between 5,000 and 10,000 VND, and be sure to park in designated areas where there are parking attendants. It's not in your best interest to park wherever your bike will fit because it just might get confiscated by the police or stolen. Number eight, barter. 
For those of you who love to barter, Vietnam is right up your alley. Bartering and haggling is an age-old tradition that is deeply ingrained into the culture of buying and selling goods. Whether it's in bustling markets, at street stalls, or even in some retail stores, negotiating a price is a common practice. Number nine, Sims. There are many options available from various telecommunication providers in Vietnam. Viatel and Vinaphone were the top two that we saw while we were staying in Hanoi, and you could choose from a range of prepaid local SIM cards tailored to your needs. Whether you work online, make local calls, or stay connected on social media, these SIM cards offer affordable packages and flexible options to suit every budget and duration of stay. We went with Vinaphone and it cost 40 Canadian dollars for two people for 30 days with 4 to 5G unlimited internet that we topped up every 30 days for 18 Canadian dollars for the both of us. Number 10, motorbike. Fung's motorbike shop specializes in motorbike rentals, providing you with the perfect opportunity to explore the vibrant streets of Hanoi and beyond on two wheels. Whether you're looking for a reliable scooter for just zipping around the city or a sturdy motorbike for the off the beaten path adventures, Fong's offers a diverse selection of well-maintained bikes at competitive prices. For our northern adventure, we rented a Honda XR150L motorbike and it cost 400,000 VND per day. And then we had a Honda lead for most of our time just driving around the city. We paid 1.4 million VND per month for the Honda lead, but daily rentals can cost between 150,000 to 350,000 VND. Fung's Motorbike Shop also provides repair and maintenance services, ensuring that travelers can embark on their journeys with peace of mind. Number 11, condo. With the increased prices in Airbnb, we try and use alternative methods when trying to find a place to live, such as Facebook Marketplace, Facebook chat groups, or just even reaching out to realtors in the area we are looking. And I realize not everyone has the time to seek out properties outside of Booking.com, Airbnb, or Agoda. It took us three days to find our condo and we found it on Facebook Marketplace. We signed a contract for three months and negotiated a rate of 9 million VND per month, which costs about 500 Canadian, with one month deposit plus utilities which costs approximately 1.3 million VND per month for water and electricity. And speaking of money, exchanging money in Hanoi is a straightforward process. You just need to know where to go. You'll find many places that exchange currency on Hangbok Street, whereas many banks will only exchange USD to VND, not the other way around. I found it interesting that Vietnam doesn't use coins and it's a good idea to always carry smaller bills with you. You can exchange your larger bills at convenience stores like the Circle K. And just a quick note on tipping, you are not expected to tip in Vietnam like they do in other countries. Number 13, food. Vietnamese cuisine is rich in flavors, textures, and aromas that reflect the country's diverse culinary heritage and cultural influences. From fragrant pho noodle soups to crispy banh mi sandwiches, Vietnam's food scene will captivate you with its deliciously versatile options. Nestled in the heart of the old quarter, Beer Street is a bustling area lined with vibrant outdoor eateries and bars, offering an array of tantalizing street food and local brews. A few restaurants we liked were the Assaultant Hanoi Restaurant in Westlake, and in the old quarter we liked Ban Mi Mama, Quan Little Hanoi, and La Place, which has a great view of St. Joseph's Cathedral. Number 14, Water. Another thing to keep in mind is that drinking the tap water in Vietnam is not recommended for travelers. To avoid the risk of getting sick, stick to boiled or bottled water. It's widely available and affordable throughout Vietnam. Number 15, where to stay. There are three main areas people like to stay when you come to Hanoi, and that's the Old Quarter, the French Quarter, and Westlake. That's where we stayed. But if we had to do it again, I would probably stay in the Old Quarter or the French Quarter next time. One of our biggest mistakes was going at the wrong time of the year, dry season. There are certain times of the year when visiting may be less than ideal due to unfavorable weather conditions, and we definitely experienced this on our northern adventure. The winter months, although dry, can bring cold temperatures, low clouds, and the occasional drizzle making visibility in the beautiful mountains almost non-existent. We started our adventure at the end of November, and even though all the research we did said to go in the dry season when the skies are clearer. I'd recommend going at the beginning of October or in the month of April. Some of the highlights from our three-month stay in northern Vietnam, I'd have to say, are Nim Binh. 
often referred to as the Halong Bay on land. It's a captivating destination nestled in the northern region of Vietnam, best known for its spectacular limestone monoliths, lush rice paddies, and winding waterways. Ninh Binh offers a serene and picturesque escape from the hustle and bustle of city life. Some of our highlights were Bic Dong and, of course, Dragon Mountain. Another highlight is obviously our motorbike adventure. Even though we didn't officially do the Hajang Loop, one of the things I liked most about our adventure was adjusting our route according to the things we wanted to see and not just having to stick to the loop entirely. I loved going to Bang Jok Waterfall, the Mei Lang Pass even though it was foggy, <laughs> and I even loved the Muddy Mountain Pass. It's definitely an adventure we'll never forget. We did a day cruise in Halong Bay on December 25th, and even though I felt the cruise was a little bit overrated, we did really enjoy how quiet the town was. Another highlight was Angel Eye Mountain when we were on our northern adventure. Although it was a little tricky to get there, the mountains were absolutely stunning. I hope you'll keep these key insights in mind when getting ready for your trip to Vietnam. From embracing the vibrant street food culture to navigating the bustling cities and serene landscapes, Vietnam offers a wealth of opportunities for exploration and discovery that will create lasting memories. Don't forget to hit the like button if you found this video helpful. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button to see more videos like this.